Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about my A6 ad and what this little ball means to me. Um, when I was a little, little boy growing up, I was probably about four or five, I knew that I was a girl. But I didn't know how to tell anybody. Um, I didn't have the internet, I didn't have trans world models on TV, so I felt like there was something wrong with me. Like I was a freak. And I wanted to be as normal as I could be and do what other boys did. So I played sports and I loved being outdoors and it wasn't that I was trying to hide who I was because I really didn't like Barbies. I wasn't, I felt like a girl, but I didn't like those things. So I really did enjoy playing basketball and being outside and playing sports. And as I got older, especially junior high, high school, college, Basketball and being on that court was the one thing that I could do to escape reality and the thoughts of suicide that were constantly there because I hated who I was and as I tried to have social interactions with people all I could think about was how my mind and my body didn't match and that there was something wrong and it was high schoolish I think around in there maybe late junior high that I had the internet and was able to research that I wasn't alone that this is a thing that the word transgender existed and there are so many other people out there just like me. By that time, I was already involved in the church and youth ministry and was telling myself that all those feelings were wrong, that God would take it all away. If I just prayed right, he would make it go away. And I held on to that. And I continued to run for my truth and I fell in love in college when I was doing mission work and I got married and I thought, okay, so God's, God's taking care of this. I'm going to be an awesome dad. I'll be a great husband and everything's going to be normal and fine and life's going to be great. I was wrong. I was so wrong. Um, when that marriage ended because of who I am and that coming out more and more, I finally gave my ch myself a chance to breathe and to experience life for the first time. And when that happened, sports really didn't interest me anymore. I, I lost that connection because, I don't know, it really wasn't something I needed anymore. It was an escape. I didn't need to escape. So I focused on transition and myself for a while. And a couple years later, I really started to miss being on the basketball court and playing the game of basketball and just the fun I used to have by giving other people a hard time and just the laughter and, I don't know, friendships I built. Um, and not to mention, I was good. Not usually that confident. I don't brag a lot, but at 5'8", in high school and college, as a little white boy being able to dunk a basketball, pretty good, just saying. Um, I've played against NBA players, NCAA D1 stars, I've played against people who've played um, in Europe and across globally, and I could hold my own. So my idea when I moved to LA was to track the WNBA and do what I love to also do what I love. Because if I make a team, that'll be a big deal as a trans woman, and it'll give me a platform that offers me the opportunity to really share my story on a much bigger level. And I really, really want that um, for both sides because I do really want to play basketball. So that's going to be next year. This year's on hold a little bit because of my cats. They're getting older. They've been sick a lot at the vet almost every week. So I've had to put training and everything aside. But it'll happen. It'll happen. I may be too old to play, but I'm going to try. My agency that I signed with when I got here for acting and modeling, they know my story. And they sent me um, to an audition for inspirational stories with an athletic clothing brand. Didn't really say the campaign or the campaign name or what was going on. And I show up nervous. Not the normal type of nervous because it's an audition, but the type of nervous that happens when you're a trans person going to a casting that's not casting for a trans person. And part of your narrative that you're going to share that day is a trans story. So 
automatically I feel like I'm not going to have a chance. And I get there and I do some tricks with the basketball and they take pictures and video and then they give me one minute, just one freaking minute to share my story. And I've been thinking about doing this forever. I was like, I, I know exactly what I need to say. Turn the camera on and my mind went blank and I butchered it. I know I butchered it. For the next two days, that's all I could think about was, oh, if I would have just said it this way, or if I would have let them know that this ball was the only reason I didn't commit suicide all those years, I would have got the part. So I was, I was a little depressed. Um, and it wasn't until a few days later, my agent called screaming and excited because I booked the job. Um, and I was really emotional. It really meant so much to me that, oh my God, I'm finally booking my first job in LA. This is awesome. And I get to do it because I shared my truth. So the day of the shoot, we're at the beach, which that in itself is amazing. They get paid to be at the beach all day. Uh, I was shooting last. They wanted to get the volleyball stuff and the kid at the skate park. So I got to just hang out on set. During that time, I had this amazing opportunity to share my story with the hair and makeup team and with wardrobe and really open up their hearts um, and their minds to an experience they really didn't know anything about. And that was a big highlight for me that day, just to be able to on set to advocate any way I could by sharing my story. Later that day, we go to the basketball court and to start, they have me in a van with the photographer, videographer, the director, and a few other people. And they're doing an audio interview to let me share my story. So it's my chance to redeem myself from that horrible audition video. Now I get to really share my story. And then when we exited the van, Everybody wanted to give me a hug and they wanted to show me their support and they, they let me know how much my story touched them and that they really wanted to make this the best shoot of the day. Yeah, they, they really wanted to highlight my story and let people know who we are. And that meant a lot. So the next hour was amazing but very challenging. They had me running around the court like I was playing basketball with other people and never had to really pretend I was doing that. So that was awkward, especially with the photographer following me around and shooting and then a videographer on the other side following me around. And I can tell you that that type of photo shoot is definitely not a pretty photo shoot. It's, it's, it's an ugly photo shoot. Um, the facial expressions you make are god awful, or at least the ones I do. Um, so that part of it doesn't look the greatest, but her pictures were amazing. She took some great shots of me mid-air doing different uh, moves and they're on posters and billboards in London, which is, is everything to me. And I think the part that was the biggest highlight was the video. And when they sent that to me and I got to see it for the first time, I cried and I had goosebumps because it's this one minute clip of me playing basketball and there's this audio over it um, where I say that I'm a trans woman. And that's in their advertising. To me, that's a really big deal that a company as big as ASICS is willing to embrace that and share that with the world. So that was a huge highlight for me. It meant everything. And on top of that, I got to go to London to see all of these ads, um, to experience Europe for the first time. Um, and I'm gonna share the video clip and a couple of the pictures from London at the end of the video. So please let me know what you think. I'm really proud of it. It was an opportunity for me to build a platform. Um, and I'm telling you all of this story, not to brag about myself. I'm no one special. I'm no one famous. It's one ad, but it's an ad to me that means a lot because it's an opportunity to share a different narrative. The trans narrative that I've heard since day one is typically the same are very similar, and that's trans women who identified as gay men before, or very feminine and transitioned early, or really embraced at least a part of who they were, whereas I never did. No one ever had a clue. I ran so hard for my truth, and a lot of us do. 
There's a lot of people who go through a marriage and have kids and either join the military or play sports or do anything they can to fit the stereotypical norms of being a guy. And those stories aren't shared, so you feel alone. You don't feel like you're part of the narrative. And I want more people to share their story and their narrative. That's the whole idea, is we all need something to connect to and feel like we're not alone. I get messages every day asking me, how do I tell my wife? What do I do to transition? Um, I'm afraid to lose my family. I've got kids. And while I can't answer everybody because I don't know the best answer for you, um, I can tell you one thing. You have to love yourself. And self-care and self-love are so important because you may very well lose everything. Um, I lost my wife, I lost most of my friends, I lost my job and career, and it was hard, and it's still hard, but I'm here in Los Angeles chasing my dreams. I have an amazing community of friends um, that are basically my family, and what I've gained is so much more than what I lost. And that's how it typically works. Things get so much better when you can truly be yourself. So that's the point of this video. That's the point of the A6 ad. That's the point of everything I try to do with my life is to be that example of, yes, you can. And it does truly get better. It gets so much better. Um, and that's why I wanna share. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that I inspired you. Please share your story because your story can help inspire and touch somebody else. So thank you again. I love you guys. Until next time. Bye. From a very young age, I knew I was transgender, that I was supposed to be a girl. Life is really what you make of it. And to really get the most out of it, you have to love yourself. If you can love yourself, the world is yours. My name is Kayla. I move me.